Welcome back. Um, so we just came back from the White House. I thought the meeting was productive. Um, I thought it was more productive than the other meetings we had, but we still have differences. Uh, we left the meeting with um, <coughs> directing the members and the staff to get back together, work through the night, knowing where some of our differences lie, see if there's other ideas of where we could work through. But I've been very clear ever since February 1st. I mean, here we are, June 1st being the deadline. This is not how government should work. This is not how the Republicans wanted to work. When, when I got elected speaker, I, as early as January 15, I requested a meeting with the president regarding debt ceiling. We all knew this day was going to come. We thought it'd come later. And I sat with him on February 1st saying, let's work through this together. Let's find where we can find common ground. That we can curve the, our amount of spending, uh, make our economy stronger, curve inflation, and make us less dependent upon China. But he told me for 97 days they wouldn't meet with us. That's really why we're where we are today. The House Republicans, they took action. The Senate never did anything. And that, that also made it much more difficult, because you would have had two bills that you could conference together. Um, We've been working, as you know, day in and day out, trying to get to an agreement. I've been very clear with the president from day one. We're not going to raise taxes. We've got more revenue coming in to government in a 50-year average than any other time in the history. Only two other times do we have this higher percentage. But the problem is we're spending more than almost any time in modern history. So it's a spending problem. We should pull back money that's been wasted. We should help people get jobs by having work requirements. We've seen that work time and again. We should find ways that we cap the amount of spending going outlay because the Democrats had spent so much. Even, even Joe Manchin had thought of that idea of a 1% cap going forward. I think these are a lot of productive ideas that we have out there. And I think we can, at the end of the day, come to a common ground agreement. And so let me bring up Chairman McHenry, who's been in these meetings all the way through, and he's going to have more meetings. Um, and I, I can't say enough about the, um, the staff from the White House, down the OMB director, and also Rashetti. They're principled, they're smart, they're intelligent, and uh, they're very professional in all these negotiations. Patrick? Um. Look, I, I would describe, as the speaker said, uh, the, the, the meeting was reasonably productive. Uh, to have both the president and the speaker in the same room with both negotiating teams was a great level setting exercise with the president back in the country. Uh, that was, it was productive to have everyone on the same page of the, of the challenges uh, that we have to coming to terms with the deal. What I sense from the White House uh, from the, uh, is a lack of urgency. Um, I'm chair of the Financial Services Committee. I'm worried about the impacts on the markets. Uh, I think uh, to, to play brinksmanship is not wise when it comes to where we are with the, the banking system, with the economy. Uh, and I think we should have a sense of urgency from the White House team uh, that was not evident in this meeting. Um, the fact is, with every debt ceiling, we take stock of our, our spending. When Democrats control the House and the Senate with a Republican president, they use that opportunity to raise spending. The Speaker has made clear to his negotiating team, Congressman Graves and I, that uh, it was very important that we spend less money next year than we we're spending this year. That was imperative to us, to go in the room and make sure we protect uh, the House position on our debt ceiling bill and to negotiate the most conservative terms we possibly can, but one that can pass the Senate and be signed by a Democrat president who's increased spending dramatically uh, in his first two years in office. It's a, it's a ch tough challenge. It's a very tough challenge uh, to deal with all the equities at stake. But we have reasonable people in the room that are trying to come to these terms. And I think that is the, the hopeful sign. Uh, but it is a very challenging situation we currently are, are in. And without a lack of urgency, it's very difficult to deal with the most challenging issues. What do you, yes, sir, what do you mean, explain what you mean by lack of urgency. I mean, you've been meeting now for a couple weeks Well, we have the president back in town from the G7. Uh, I had a, an expectation personally of walking into the room and, and hearing the president, the speaker, uh, being aligned that we need to come to terms quickly, given how, it, how long it takes to get anything through the House and through the Senate, uh, especially with the deadline looming. Uh, I just didn't sense that from the president. I've heard that from the speaker since February 1st when he met with the president. Let's work through this. We don't need brinksmanship. And he's been clear with me as well. We don't need brinksmanship here. 
Um, and I think it, this is a moment where cooler heads need to prevail, and we need to come to terms and do so uh, as rapidly as we possibly can. My whole goal here was always from the beginning, we want to be responsible. Being responsible would have negotiated this months ago like we wanted to. Being reasonable that we'd find common ground. Being sensible that we spend too much money. Unfortunately, we are where we are today, but thankfully the Republicans have passed the bill, so they're strong. Yes, sir. Look, um, we know where the deadline is. That's why we passed the bill sooner. I believe um, we're going to let the teams work tonight, see if we could find, get progress, but we didn't. We, productive, Speaker, but not progress. Mr. Speaker, as you get closer to this deadline, if you still don't have a deal, is there any scenario where you would do a clean up or down uh, increase on the debt limit? I a clean debt ceiling? No. No. That's no. Not what you want, but if you're no. May 31st, you're no, let me be clear. No, we're never putting a clean debt ceiling on the floor. You want to know why? It's like having a child, giving them a credit card, and every single time they hit the limit, you just raised it. To now you owe more money on the credit card than you make in an entire year, because that's what we have as Americans, that we owe more than our entire economy is. So when are you going to change the direction? We've passed the bill. We have the ability to do this. You don't have to worry, because we have a, a bill over on the Senate side that they can pass that it raises the debt ceiling. We can get this job done now. I don't think it's productive for anybody to keep kicking the, down, the, the can down the road. And let me just tell you, for every new American that's so excited, that, that was blessed today by having a new child, by kicking that can down the road, that child got a $94,000 bill today, and they've only been alive one day. That is wrong, and that has got to stop. Speaker McCarthy, um, is an increase to defense veterans and Department of Homeland Security, border security, still a demand for you? Look, all I've said from the very beginning, we need to spend less than we spent this year. Mm -hmm. Is that hard to do? So how do you no. know when you spend more on other things? Just like thing? every other household. L l let me explain it to you, okay? We need to spend less, but what have, we, what have we spent when the Democrats have been in power? They've increased spending, especially on discretionary, by more than 20%. We are spending more than at any other time. Then if you want to look at it from a point of GDP, we are now more than 24% of GDP spending when on a 50-year average we're at 21%. So how do you do it? We're going to do it like every single household does it. They're going to make a decision on what's the most important, but they're not going to get, be able to spend so much more. So we're going to make a decision just as Republicans and Democrats together. We're going to find a baseline that we agree to that will be less than what we spent this year, and appropriators are going to sit together and prioritize what's right. Do you think it's right that we would spend and leave money, billions of dollars out there for COVID that we appropriated for two years and they never spent and the pandemic's over? What about bringing that money back? What about helping people get back into the workforce so they pay into Social Security and Medicare? I don't think it's right to take from a hardworking taxpayer and go borrow from China to pay an able-bodied person with no dependents to sit on a couch. I think it's more productive. Yes. Thank you. Beyond the top line numbers, have you been able to negotiate the things like permitting or the COVID aid and get that Look, We've had a lot of discussions, but nothing's agreed to, okay? So we've had good discussions on a lot of items. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Um, you said progress has been made. On, on what items has progress been made? Is dealing with Did I say progress or productive? I'm sorry. Oh, I meant well, so what Words part matter. of me was productive? Like, how was it I think the productive part was who was in the room, narrowing where we're talking. We're not talking over each other. We're not, we're not saying, oh, let's bring something new into the discussion. Let's not talk about raising taxes. That's been off for a long time. We literally talked about where we are having disagreements and ideas. So to me, that's productive. Not progress, but productive. Yes, sir. Is, I don't think you're very for negotiations. Yes. Mr. Speaker. Um, the chairman referenced uh, some <coughs> pressing challenges. What is still the most pressing challenge where the two sides are far apart? And are, is a framework starting to come into focus at all here? Look, I see where the framework can be. You just got to have people who are willing to get to that point. Yes. You mentioned the sense of lack of urgency. You say you that was Patrick's know. words. Sorry. <laughs> um, also, you won't put a clean debt ceiling on the floor. Um, does this mean at some point you're going to look at um, Mr. McClintock's debt prioritization bill? No. No, it's just like the same question you had with me. Would I ever win a speaker? I don't give up. 
I'm not going to give up on the American people. We're going to get this done. I don't think it's productive. If you look at too often in life, you want to take the easy way out. What would it do if you just raised the debt ceiling and did nothing else? You would make the problem even worse going forward. I wasn't elected to do that. And the other part is, if you kicked it for a short time period, how would that be productive? I think we've got to get on with our lives. We've got to get this economy stronger. We've got to curve inflation. We've got to be less dependent on China. And that means changing the behavior here. And I'm willing to fight to make that happen. Uh, yes. You, guys, you, guys, you said your staff and Congressman Henry Sarr are going to be here all night working on this. If you guys are really as far apart as you say you are with the White House, where nothing is agreed to, what's the point of staff level talks at this point if you and the president are that far apart? Look, I don't think we would agree to talks if we thought it wasn't productive and that we couldn't come to an agreement. I actually believe at the end of the day we can come to an agreement. So that's why we're together. Why, why it was productive today and not, not giving um, progress, we only talked about where our differences were. We talked about items that, um, ideas to find that. So we're asking the staff to get back and run through those ideas to see if we could come to an agreement. Mr. Yes, ma'am. Well, I would assume I'd meet with President Biden every day till we get this done. This is too important. Do you expect to meet with him tomorrow? Look, if we don't meet, I'm sure we're going to talk on the phone. But we're going to have the staff get together, and then we're going to get back. It was not set that we had to see one another. Or at least we're going to talk, but nothing set there. Yes, ma'am. Thanks, my friends. Um, and following up on Nicole's question, to clarify what you're saying, we hear you saying no clean debt ceiling increase. Does that also mean if there were a short term, which of course you don't want right now, but if there were, that also would not be clean? No clean. Okay, listen. In the Senate, a clean debt ceiling couldn't pass. In the House, it can't pass. So why should we waste time on something that's not going to pass instead of finding something that is a solution to the problem? We are too close to give up. I think America's too great to think on small ideas like that. I want to solve the problem, okay? Yes, ma'am. Well, let me, be very, let me be very clear. From the first day I sat with the president, there's two criteria I told him. We're not going to raise taxes because we bring in more money than we ever have, and we're not going to pass a clean debt ceiling, and we've got to spend less than we spent this year. And so everything else is open for negotiations. But th that is at the end of the day, it has to fit in that place. Yes. Members are elected to do the job, and I think when we get this done, they'll vote for it. Yes, ma'am. Look, you, you all do a great job. You all want me to go negotiate with you. You're not the person to negotiate. It's the president. And the, the way when I say nothing's agreed to, we don't agree to anything until we agree to everything. We've had our discussions about this. Well, you said that uh, the, the Oh yeah. Uh, but, uh, but at the same time, Very uh, smart. Mr. Chairman, you said, uh, Mr. Chairman McKinley, you said that uh, there's a lack of seriousness. How do you bridge that gap? Uh, no, I, th I think you're, you're, I, no, no, I think I you're misinterpreting. No, no, I didn't say that. I did not say I'm sorry, I'm lack sorry. of seriousness. Uh, no, absolutely not. No, the president sent a credible team. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Half of it, two thirds of you know Shalanda Young personally, yeah. right? He sent warriors up here on behalf of, the, uh, of his administration. That's who he sent up. That's who we're negotiating with. It's, they're a highly credible team. They're a tough negotiating team. These are tough discussions that we're having, but they're honest. We're honest with each other. So what I talked about was a lack of urgency. Urgency. And I've been consistent about my position here on the debt ceiling. I don't want brinksmanship. It is not in America's interest it is not in America's interest for brinksmanship. And what I wanted to hear from the, from the president and his team was that we're going to get it done quickly, and we're interested in closing this thing out. We've been circling on the same number of things we've been circling on uh, since I came out on Wednesday. My apologies, I didn't start with this next year. Do you have ideas outside of the House Republican bill? Can you talk about the new ideas that you're... Oh, the, 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 look, it. when I refer to new ideas, we have talked the whole time, how can we spend less than we spent this year? So ideas of where are areas that you could find savings. 
And we would bring up an area that we want to have savings in, and they say, well, that's a problem. Okay, but we've got to have savings, so let's look at another area. Those are the things I'm talking about, ideas of how to handle it. Yes, ma'am. Do you think the sense of the White House is seriously concerned with the 14th Amendment? No, I don't think anybody with a legal mind would think the 14th Amendment would even work, and nobody does before. So. Will you be giving us an update tomorrow morning after the staff meet tonight? I will have to because you people just stay right here the entire time. I can't walk. I'm afraid some of you are going to get hurt just walking. And so, I mean, I try, and you tell me if I'm not, I try to be as open and as upfront of what's going on. I try to take as many questions as I can from all of you. Uh, you might get tired, and you're raising your hand and all excited, so go ahead. No, look, I, I'd like to solve. It's another problem that the White House has ignored that the Republicans have a solution for. And I've always said, Mr. President, if we could find that we could do something on the border, even though it wouldn't look like it would score as savings, I know I would count it as savings because I believe it would save Americans' lives with fentanyl. It would save America to being stronger, that we had border security. But I don't believe at the end of the day that that's uh, getting much um, I keep asking this side. No one over here wants to ask a question? Raise the hand. Like, yes. You, is this spending freeze, is that enough to be a cut with inflation in your minds? Because they've offered a spending okay. freeze. No, okay. I just want to make sure you understand. I'm not, I'm not going to be, but a freeze is not less. A freeze is spending the same amount. Oh my. You should run, you should run for office with the Democrats. <laughs> my God. <laughs> You, you, you're getting the liberal media uh, uh, concept. So, yes. Republicans have not yes, been Republicans. able to agree to 302B numbers. Um, what do you mean? We passed the bill. Oh, okay. Well, so, okay. So, let's let's talk about a probe. So, well, which so one? is it going to be more difficult to come? Is are you relying on this negotiation with President Biden to come to that? And how are you going to rally Republicans around that final number that needs? Oh, very easy. Okay. So when you have the debt ceiling, you're going to agree to a top line number, 302A. That will give the appropriators the number. So then they can work as the jobs they are to decide what takes priority and where spending will come out. Um, the difficulty part is that we don't have that done yet, and we're in the middle of a, a debt ceiling discussion. But we know the timeline is June 1st, so we know this is all going to happen here pretty soon, and the appropriators will have that number to be able to work towards it. Um, the productivity, we've only passed a couple so far out because I think some of them, it would probably be smart to hold until the debt ceiling's done sh shortly. Could I, I ask specifically how important permitting reform is to, to this conversation? Well, I think permitting reform is this. It's the red tape that stops things from being built. And we actually have had some productive conversations. Garrett Graves is one of the policy wonks on this, and he's had some good discussion. About I don't believe at the end of the day if we are able to get some permitting reform, I believe that will help the economy and grow the economy, but I don't think it will solve all the permitting reform. So what, I, what I've promised to the president, I even said today, is what we don't get done, I promise, we'll continue those conversations and keep going. Because I want to be able to build things in America. But you anticipate that something will be in the bill. I, I hope to be, and I, I believe it can be. And just to clarify, when you're saying you promise to do something else, you're talking about uh, transmission deployment for renewable energy. Look, look, I don't want to pick it. All I said is we will continue to work on the parts that we can't come to agreement on. I, I, th I think having... Kathy McMorris Rogers, and I want to wish her a happy birthday today, and Bruce Westerman. And, and the thing that the, we really had, this is where I said it was a productive conversation. In this conversation, the president and I both agreed that you can't do permitting reform for one form of energy. It has to be for all the above, right? Lots of times people come out and say, oh, I just want to do it maybe for um, oil production or just for renewables. No, it would help everybody. And in my position is I believe we need all forms of energy. If you look at where America's growing, we need to double the size of our grid. So we need everything. And I think where permitting reform would really go is it's cutting the red tape, letting us build things again, and it just won't be energy, it'd be others. All right, last question. Yes. We've been circling on the same issues for a week. We want to get it done. What is going to force the end game? I think June 1st. I think June. Look, one thing I found about government is they only worked it. We didn't want to be here, as I said before. And you say circling, we made the circle smaller, smaller, smaller. So we're getting closer. Don't give up on us. I don't give up on you. So all right. Thank you all very much. Have a good night.